You wake up in the morning and you want to have a talk show So you film one in your bedroom and you call it Up Late Live Hello ladies and gentlemen of the internet, whenever and wherever you are in the world And welcome to Up Late Live My name is Shane Adamzak and we're here today as always in my bedroom in the beautiful Mile End of Montreal, Canada Today on the show I'll be chatting to a Montreal improviser, wrestler and food connoisseur, James McGee we're going to have a musical performance by singer-songwriter Johnny Griffin. And of course, joining me as always, because she lives here, my housemate, Leia Rondo, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe we can come inside for this one. My first guest on the show today is a Montreal improviser, a wrestler, and one of my favourite food connoisseurs of Montreal. Please make him very welcome to the desk, James McGee! Welcome to the show, James. Thank uh, you can, so I, much. can I offer you some uh, tension paper? I some will. Up there? Can I pop it? You can. <laughs> uh, now, I know you as James, but uh, many people in Montreal may know you as Twiggy. I would, I would love to think many people know me as that. <laughs> <laughs> which is, uh, of course, your wrestling That's correct. persona. Now, you're, you're uh, about the same build as me, maybe mm. a little bigger. Not the traditional body type you mm. expect uh, when you think of a wrestler. What, uh, what got you into the sport? Well, I, uh, my, I think the same way that a lot of people do, their family um, raises them to watch it. So as far back as I can remember, my parents had me sit in front of the TV and watch pro wrestling. And then as I got older, I became so obsessed with it that everyone else in the family stopped liking it. So. And you just kept going. And how did you actually become a wrestler yourself? Well, I, I guess like when they're a kid, everyone knows of like the traditional companies, the WWE or WWF at the time. And then uh, I got the internet, which was a huge thing for me, and it allowed me to look at other things, uh, but nothing, nothing suggestive. Um, so <laughs> as I searched through different types of wrestling, I discovered, wow, there's stuff in Mexico and Japan and Europe, and then I found out there's stuff in the backyard, so there's wrestling in Montreal. Oh, cool, I'm going to go to this. And uh, this one company that I was particularly um, interested in, I found out that they were opening a wrestling school, so it was like the perfect storm. And was there, was there ever a point where you thought to yourself, I don't exactly look like The Rock, mm. I don't know if I can do this. No, I didn't care at all. I was like, <laughs> I'm a skinny guy, I'm going to embrace this. Maybe I'll take steroids, but I probably won't. Mm. And that, I mean, that sort of became part of your, your wrestling character, right? Yeah, I definitely use it to my advantage of being the, the small guy who, who gets his ass kicked all the time. And now it's nine, not going on ten years and still get my ass kicked. But the thing is, people... They love Twiggy. And yeah. They, and they want, because you're the underdog, they want to see you succeed. I think that's part of the charm. I think that's uh, the part of the charm to a T. That's what I constantly strive to do is the, the worse the beating I can take, the more people feel better for me. And I'll come close to winning, then I'll lose. And then when I do win, it's just so much sweeter. Yeah, and of course, uh, people are always uh, going about how wrestling is fake, it's not real, but uh, despite that, it's still a very physical thing that you're doing. How much of it is real, and how often do you get hurt? I heard something recently, and I really, I really loved it. Someone said, uh, gravity isn't fake. So, Ooh, we're, yeah. I think the instinct when people think about wrestling and like the reasons they don't like it is because I think um, they believe that wrestling is uh, presented as a sport. Mm. Where I mean, it's it's definitely like the 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 phrase that WWE coined was sports entertainment, and I definitely agree with that. So I think that they believe that we're trying to um, emit this persona that we're on like par with like hockey players, like Wayne Gretzky, or football players, or baseball players. When we're we're playing roles, and it's definitely physically demanding. Um, and I think a lot of people think we're doing it on a trampoline, which certainly isn't the case. It's a lot of steel and metal and. Um, plywood and like that much of like some foam so yeah everything it's wrestling sucks to do from the standpoint of man this shit hurts yeah and uh the fans they love it i mean i've been to a few of the shows here in montreal and people go crazy uh for example i just want to show uh, we're going to cut to a clip of uh this character here who's uh who takes wrestling very seriously oh yeah yeah um i just want to thank each and every one of y'all for all you've done to your bodies. It's still real to me, damn it! What do you, th what do you think of fans like that? <laughs> I love it. I think those are like the, um, the core fans that um, really want to believe it and they just, uh, they, they lose themselves in the moment. I think it's like, I would equate it to people that are really into 
like a Star Wars or Star Trek or horror movies or comic books or any anything like that. Like wrestling is definitely I would categorize it with those things as like a very niche type of entertainment that people watch and there's certain types of people that really, really, really get into it and it's still real to them, damn it. Yeah. That's great. Um, I know you as well from the uh, improv scene in mm -hmm. Montreal. Uh, do you ever find as much crossover in your life between your life as a wrestler and your life as an improviser? When I first got started, I thought these two things are so eerily similar. Like there's there's people that you meet in improv, like oh, I really click with this person, I really get along with them, and then there's people who you think, man, this guy is just so weird, or this girl is just on another planet. It's the same thing with wrestling. There's people that I think really truly believe they are that character that they play. There's just so many, so many psychos, and I would say the same thing for improv or probably any type of performance. Um, every time I bump into you in the city, nine times out of ten, when we're doing a show, whatever it is, I always find you talking about food. Mm. Uh, I consider you to be one of sort of like Montreal's like bargain finding <laughs> food connoisseurs. Mm. Uh, I, what I want to know is, can you tell for people who live here or people that we might be thinking of coming to Montreal, give us your top three uh, tips for finding mm. the best food cheaply in Montreal. Uh, okay, tip one, lower your standards greatly. <laughs> <laughs> You, you can't have high standards if you want to eat cheap, so I would say highly regarded McDonald's. Probably the cheapest place to eat yeah. if you're ordering off the value menu. I love Big Macs, but I'll only get the Big Mac if I get the coupons. And then I'll get the two Big Macs for about four, $4.99. Other than that, $1.39 stick to the value menu. That's tip number one. Tip number two is oof, you got to be a cheapskate. You have to be a huge cheapskate. you got to be so tight with your money that you squeak when you walk. So if it'll be after a show or whatever, if you're like, hey, I'm going to go eat at this place, I will generally ask, what's like the average cost of a meal? And if we're going over like 12 bucks, I'm probably not going to go. And if I do go, I'm just going to order a glass of water. Tip three, you got to be like a hunter. You got to like sniff out those deals. So if you see like stuff on Groupon, that's where you jump on it. I'm a big fan of Groupon, but I've discovered that I don't like to spend money on Groupon. What I'll do is attach myself to people who buy Groupons and then I just blend <laughs> in with them and then they'll treat me. So I would say those are three pretty this damn good smart, tips. man. So on the screen. So James McGee's hot tips. Yeah. Lower your standards. Yeah. Stick out a bargain yeah. and be tight. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I love it. All right, thank you so much for talking to us. Before we let you go, uh, I want to play a little game. It's yes. called Wrestler, Not a Wrestler. Okay. I'm going to name some uh, some characters from the world of wrestling, or perhaps not. I want you to tell me if they are a wrestler or not a wrestler. Yes, sir. All right, so God, it's time I to hope play. I hit these rates. Yeah, so let's see how you go. So it's time to play Wrestler, Not a Wrestler. Yeah. All right, here we go. Number one, Jake the Snake. Uh, wrestler and addict. Correct. Uh, the Iron Sheik. Wrestler and an addict. <laughs> Axel Foley. Not a wrestler. That's Eddie Murphy. That is. But he'd be a great wrestler. That is true. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter. Wrestler and uh, a GI Joe. Absolutely correct. The Ultimate Warrior. Wrestler and lunatic. <laughs> very very good. Uh, Big Daddy Lou. Oh, not a wrestler, but he should have been. Just yes. a man who may or may not have breath. <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, Ross Geller. Not a wrestler, do that's friends, that's good, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> but he was training briefly to be an ultimate fighting champion, I believe. They're very legitimate. Uh, <laughs> brother Love. Ooh, trying to give me a, a swerve here. He was involved in wrestling, but he was only a manager. Oh, he's good! He's very good. Uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Ooh. Probably number one wrestler of all time. Very good. Uh, Mad Ab Sab Mullins. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna say no. Oh, he's a fringe artist. You're very good. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna stop you there. Got a Hill, great wrestling name. Hillbilly Jim. Big time wrestler in the 80s. That from, is correct. From Muddock, Kentucky. <laughs> Andre the Giant. One of the greatest species of wrestlers of all time. <laughs> he was from uh, Grenoble in the French Alps. He pushed over a car with four men in it. <laughs> uh, Peter Andre the Small. He can't be a wrestler, but he sure as hell should be. All right, and finally, Carlos Santana. <laughs> Carlos Santana may be a distant relative of Mexican wrestler Tito Santana, but... Damn it! <laughs> James McGee knows oh. everything about wrestling, and we're going to be right back with more after this on Uplight Live. 
This week on Besides the Music. Do you care about what you're saying? How can I even answer that, man? You got a lot of nerve asking me a question like that. Would you just ask the Beatles that? You got a lot of nerve, man. And when does the album come out? You got a lot of nerve asking me a question like that. How can I even answer that if you got the nerve to ask it to me? Hey, Bob, you got the time? The time? You got the time, man. Come on, man. You got a lot of nerve asking me a question like that. What's the time? What even is time? Time's an illusion, man. Created by the media. You wouldn't even understand. I could try and explain it to you, but you wouldn't probably even understand half of it. Yeah, man. Besides the music, yeah. Tuesdays at 9. And 7.30. Hey guys, we're back on Up Late Live, and it's time for our In Bed with James McGee, aka Twiggy segment. We're going to do something a little bit different this week. We're going to be uh, doing a little mini, mini WrestleMania, which I'm slightly nervous about. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, Twiggy, is there something you would like to plug for the people at home? I would love to. April 21st, which is a Sunday night, 2013, at the Belmont, which is at the corner of Saint Laurent and Mount Royal, we are going to be presenting Battle War, the one-year anniversary, a show filled with chaos, people smashing through tables and smashing through each other, wild crowd, wild night. So come celebrate a birthday with us. All right, we've got questions from people uh, from Twitter and Facebook. Those are the addresses there if you want to get your questions into the next episode of Upbeat Live. But it's time to do this. Twiggy, are you ready? Oh, God, I've been born for this moment. Let's get ready to rumble! Twiggy, what I want to know is, uh, uh, what's that <laughs> smell? Uh, Rachel from Facebook wants to know. Uh, what's that smell? <laughs> well, it's probably my uh, my gear right now. This outfit stinks of sweat and man. Uh, uh, Lila from Facebook wants to know, where have all the cowboys gone? Oh, where have all the cowboys gone? Probably to a dude ranch. Uh, uh, <laughs> Gita from Facebook wants to know, in your opinion, uh, what was Bill Voldemort's biggest mistake? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Uh, Chris from Facebook wants to know Kirk or Picard? Uh, I don't want Star Trek. Oh, God. Uh, Megan from Facebook wants to know whatever. Uh, your favorite kind of bed sheets and details, please. Ah, uh, satin. Uh, Rainer from Twitter wants to know. Ah, ah, ah. If you had to invent a religion, what would he call it and why? Oh, the utopia of cornucopia. <laughs> oh, my leg. Uh, Jackie from Twitter wants to know what is your most memorable experience with cheese? Oh, eating it. <laughs> and finally, uh, Kimber from Facebook wants to know, tell us about a time you thought you'd get in trouble for something but you got away with it. Oh, it's a story that can't be told. <laughs> okay, that's been in bed with Twiggy. We'll be right back after this. <sighs> oh, I'm tired. <laughs> so am I. This week on Besides the Music, we take a look back to two legendary folk icons, Bob Dylan and Joan Baez. Bob Dylan is a good friend of mine, and he always really liked my version of his songs, so... Come gather round people wherever you roam Besides the music, Tuesdays at 9. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode of Upload Live. Thanks to my guest Leia Rondo as always, and the wonderful James McGee. A musical guest today taking us home is one of my favourite singer-songwriters based here in Montreal. Very excited to have him on the show. Please put your hands together for Mr. Johnny Griffin! <laughs> the song. This song is called um, Drive the Snakes from Every Grave. Say goodbye We'll leave at the same time You don't have to talk to no one
Today, I'll be chatting to uh, a wonderful, I don't know, 